Welcome to the Book of Life, a show about Jewish books, music, film, and web. I'm Heidi Estrin. The Book of Life is a podcast service of the Feldman Library at Congregation B'nai Israel in Boca Raton, Florida. Additional support comes from the Association of Jewish Libraries. The Jewish Children's Book Writers and Illustrators Conference at the 92nd Street Y in New York City brings published and aspiring authors and artists together with publishers, editors, and agents, all in the hopes of growing the genre of Jewish kidlit. While I was there soaking up the atmosphere, I recorded an extended interview with author Eve Tall and grabbed a few more quick interviews just for fun. Here's your chance to virtually attend the conference. This conference has been around for 11 years, and it started because children's writers who were Jewish could not attend Saturday-run SCBWI events. So the alternative was to run an event on a Sunday. And it's even better, I think, than a traditional SCBWI event because it is small, it is intimate, and because it's small, each conferee can access an editor or agent or author and have some type of in-depth discussion. That's not possible, for instance, at the midwinter SCBWI that has 800 or more conferees. Very happy with the way it went. Hi, my name is Bryna Fireside, and many years ago I read a story, an article actually, that was printed in 1865 in the Jewish Messenger, written by a Union soldier during the Civil War who was stationed in West Virginia. They wanted to celebrate Pesach. There were about 21 Jews in the group. They wrote to their commander. He said, sure, go ahead. And... He wrote that this was the most wonderful Passover they had ever had. They knew that they were fighting a war for people who had been enslaved and would soon be free. I came to a conference at the 92nd Street Y, I think five years ago. It was the first time I'd been to this conference for Jewish writers who were writing for Jewish children. I submitted page one of the story that was not finished, and when I got back home to Ithaca, New York, there was an email waiting for me, publisher asking for the rest of the story, which I had not finished. And so I wrote her an email and said, I'll send it down in two weeks. And that's what I did. And it came out in 2008. And tell us the title. The title is Private Joel and the Sewell Mountain Seder. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, this is Diane Hess from Scholastic Press, and I gave a talk this morning, and this afternoon I'll be giving a panel. Tell us the name of your talk. My talk um, was, What Makes This Manuscript Different from All Other Manuscripts? So people in the audience who are writing can learn from that what they should be submitting to you and hopefully get published. Yes, I, I was trying to tell what Scholastic is looking for, also what I'm looking for in Jewish books, which is really the same thing in a, in a in a book that's not Jewish. <laughs> okay, cool. Thanks, Diane. Thank you. Hi, uh, my name is Sandy Wasserman. My Jewish children's picture book is in, is titled "The Sun's Special Blessing." It's about the prayer, the Birkat Tachama prayer, which is used, in fact, for other occasions other than the the sun's uh, position in the sky every 28 years. And this is my first book, though the blessing for the sun has just passed. The story itself concerns children who make a time capsule to be looked at in 28 years from now, and so even though that moment is over in Jewish history. You don't have to wait 28 years to read the book again and do the activity again and think about the blessing because all of a sudden it comes upon us and then we are rushing to find literature. So consider using the book for other occasions too, for milestones in a a child's life. Thank you very much for this uh, opportunity to tell you about my story. Okay, so here we are at the 92nd Street Y Jewish Children's Book Writers and Illustrators Conference. That's quite a mouthful. And I'm here with Eve Tall. And Eve, you've written several books about the immigrant experience. You wrote Double Crossing, and then Cursing Columbus came out as a sequel. 
and there are a lot of books about the Jewish immigrant experience, but I think yours are kind of different. They seem to me to be not your standard immigration stories. So I don't know if you have that perception too, but I wondered if you could talk about what you feel makes them unique. I did feel that my stories are unique. They're based on a true family story. In Double Crossing, I told the story of a Jewish immigrant and his daughter who were rejected at Ellis Island. And this is based on my own grandfather's immigration story. He arrived at Ellis Island as a Hasidic Jew, and he was sent back to Europe. We assume it was because he was probably not in great physical shape after the, the difficult journey and because he, he didn't have a profession. It was not a unique story. There was a 2% rejection at Ellis Island, and there was an even higher rejection, which there's no percentage for, before people actually got on the boat in Europe, because the shipping lines were responsible for the passage back to Europe if someone was rejected in America. So they were very wary of sending anyone who might be rejected, and they could be rejected for any variety of uh, minor diseases, particularly diseases you could see, like skin diseases and things that today we just rub a little antibiotic cream and it would go away. Anyway, I felt that this was a story that hadn't been told. We look at America as a country that welcomed immigrants, but it didn't welcome all immigrants. Um, and then with Cursing Columbus as well, I think what, what really piqued my interest about Double Crossing and Cursing Columbus was that you were showing not just, okay, we've arrived and here's how we settled in, and, you know, that you showed that it doesn't always happen as smoothly as that. So talk a little bit about that one. I grew up on All of a Kind Family by Sidney Taylor. It was definitely my favorite book growing up. It presents a beautiful picture of family life on the Lower East Side. And it was only later that I came to realize that it was a very romantic picture. And I discovered that the actual memoirs that were written by people who were children in the Lower East Side, they're very shocking, particularly for girls for whom education was not valued. And they were sent into sweatshops at a very early age. A girl who wanted to go on for education had a really uphill struggle, including sometimes leaving her family and just in order to be able to continue her education. There was such a contrast between the children's books I'd read about the Lower East Side and books that were written by people who actually grew up in the Lower East Side that I felt that that was what I wanted to tell in, in my sequel, In Cursing Columbus, the specific goal of telling a more realistic story of what was going on in the, in the Lower East Side. Right, including that the brother gets into um, thievery and, and a gang and into some petty crime and, you know, really goes down the wrong path. So that's also something that you don't often see depicted in a Jewish family history. Um, and it does come out all right in the end, just so nobody should worry. Um, but, yeah, I thought that was that was really different and, and uh, intriguing. Um, you're originally from New York, right? Is that right? Yes, I am. And now you live in Israel. Mm -hmm. And you published several books in Hebrew before publishing in English. Right. How is it different writing specifically for an Israeli reader versus writing for English international readers? Really, an Israeli audience is different than an American audience. I think Israeli kids are not as polite. You can put a little more physical things in. I'm thinking specifically of my story in, in Hebrew. It's called New Kid in the Class, and it was published in a bilingual translation by Milk and Honey Press. And then I've, I've been looking at the comments on Amazon, and some of the people, I think they're adults, I mean, these are picture books, commented that this is not a very educational story. The children in it use uh, insulting language, and they also tend to hit each other and fight with each other. Well, that's true. That's the way Israeli children are. I mean, I raise American children are too. I think the, the people really want role modeling rather than reality. <laughs> well, that may be true, but <laughs> I did raise three three boys, and most of my books are about boys. So I thought my 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 picture was was pretty realistic, and I was a little bit shocked that that this reader didn't think it was. So, but I think that's a 
that's a I difference think a lot in the of audience. adults aren't looking for realism. They want to it's teach education. Them, yeah, education. Yeah. yeah. Um, so in scholarly circles, you're known as an expert on the Holocaust in children's literature, yes, right? That's true. Um, so can, well, I looked on your website. <laughs> so can you talk about that? And I wanted to ask you, what are the big issues right now in writing about the Holocaust for children? And especially, do you feel that the topic of the Holocaust is overemphasized within the genre of Jewish children's literature? I think it probably is overemphasized, yes. I was drawn to the topic when I was doing my master's in children's literature at Hollins University. I was looking for a topic which hadn't been covered, in which, in which I could explore Israeli children's literature and their treatment of the Holocaust and American, North American treatment of the Holocaust for children and compare them. And nothing had been done on that. While I was working on my uh, thesis, several books came out on English language, uh, children's books about the Holocaust. So it was no longer such a, a new thing. There were at least three books published while I was working on my thesis. I think there's, it's probably being overdone today. I think one of the problems in, in what has been written is that the, the Jewish subjects of these books are too often very passive, helpless victims. I think you can see that in um, the Newbery Award winner in Lois Lowry's book. And I think there is room for a portrayal of Jewish children in their struggle. And you do see that in, in Israeli children's literature, where they're struggling for survival, where they're much more heroic. And there's a, a different emphasis. There's probably room for that in, in uh, English language uh, children's literature today also. Yves Tal, thank you so much. Thank you very much, Heidi. It was lovely talking to you. There are so many ways to connect with the Book of Life. Fan us at facebook.com slash bookoflifepodcast. Follow us at twitter.com slash bookoflifepod. Email us at bookoflifepodcast at gmail.com or leave us a voicemail at 561-206-2473. You can also listen to the latest episode by phone at 916-313-3820. And, of course, find links to everything at bookoflifepodcast.com. The Book of Life is a podcast service of the Feldman Library at Congregation B'nai Israel in Boca Raton, Florida, at cbiboca.org, and is supported in part by the Association of Jewish Libraries at jewishlibraries.org. Our background music is provided by the Freilach Makers Klezmer String Band at freilachmakers.com. Thanks for listening, and a happy reading. 